all aboard for your chance to win $1,000 every week until December 28th. That's right, $1,000 cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander. The shows are more spectacular. The trees taller. The festivities merrier. So come for your holiday traditions or make some new ones with your friends and family in the Mile High City, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. Yes, I shaved my head. I'm a bald guy now. I was a bald guy. I'm even more bald now. Just gave up on the hair. Uh, and people kept calling me a Bigfoot because I've got uh, big old feet, and big flat, fat feet, <laughs> and you know a lot of hair in places I shouldn't have it. And unfortunately, I don't have it where I need it, which is on my head. So, all right. My name is Matt Harvey. I'm the host of this Deep Woods Paranormal podcast. This is take number two. If you're on my Facebook channel. Uh, you saw me basically do a live Bigfoot podcast a little while ago, and unfortunately, it decided not to record here. So even though it said record, it didn't record. There was nothing uh, typical paranormal stuff. Anyways, um, nothing ever goes to plan. So let's get into this. Uh, this is the Bigfoot Only podcast. And usually this comes out every Friday, which is today. Um, it might come out tomorrow, which is Saturday, because it's kind of late. It's already 10 o'clock. Most people are pretty much past wanting to listen to an audio podcast or watch a video podcast unless they're going to sleep. So uh, more than likely, this will come out tomorrow morning for you guys to enjoy. I uh, hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, a little bit about us. Uh, my wife and I have been investigating the paranormal for 30 years. Uh, we basically research anything paranormal, be it Bigfoot, UFO, ghosts, excuse me, haunted locations, um, you know, basic cryptids, anything, river monsters, if it's paranormal in nature, we investigate it. So let's get into this. Uh, again, this is the Bigfoot Only podcast. Uh, we have, uh, I think, three or four other ones. Might be changing the name of the Anything Goes, Anything Paranormal uh, podcast to something else. Um, let me know if you guys would be interested in doing a Dogman podcast because they're almost as popular as Bigfoot, we might do a uh, a um, Dogman only podcast or cryptid. Well, we already Howard have a cryptid podcast. So essentially, we have the Anything Goes Paranormal podcast. We have Amanda's Ghost Stories, which she doesn't do very often. Um, we're lucky when she does come on here. We really appreciate her doing that. Um, she's just too busy with other things right now. We're just she and I are just both running around with like you know people with their heads cut off or her cut off in, in my case <laughs> anyways if you're you're listening to audio podcasts you can l- click on the links below to anything i show you guys today uh including our, our website and all of our contacts are there uh my personal contact my cell phone's there you can call text me you can email me you can go on our website and contact us there uh, and yada, yada, yada. All the links to everything we're going to talk about are down below, except for what I'm going to show you guys. That's some of the evidence that we've possibly collected. So I want to just get a disclaimer out there. Just remember that Bigfoots at this point are just theory. They're not scientifically proven, if you will, just because I don't think they, you know, the powers that be want them to be known at this point. And, you know, I'm on the fence on that, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I think it's a good thing because if they were known, I think there'd be people out there hunting them down, 
physically hunting them down, doing harm to them, maybe getting harmed themselves or killed, uh, trying to, you know, catch themselves one of these things. And uh, I just think it would be an all-out disaster. And uh, we would wipe if, you know, this, these the populations of Bigfoots out real quick. Uh, people would want them for trophies and stuff like that. So the fact that they aren't proven is a good thing. Um, the fact that they, you know, that we, we have proof of them, but we can't prove that they're real yet uh, because we keep getting kind of roadblocked um, by different organizations, let's just say, that don't want us to essentially prove their existence. Um, that's fine. I mean, I don't know if that's for the better. One of these days, someone's going to have to get a body or put one uh, to sleep long enough to get video evidence, get some uh, skin samples, hair samples, um, and do like a full, like a blood test, um, and maybe even put some kind of tracking device into one of these things. And it's going to have to be severely quiet. It may have already happened. I don't know. But this needs to be like on the, on the severe down low, because if, if they are physically, if we are able to get a specimen, let's just say, uh, they're, you know, basically we have to be really careful uh, with them because we don't want them to get hurt. I'm against killing one, to be honest with you. I don't want to shoot one or kill one. Uh, if I had the opportunity and I knew I could get away with it, I knew I could get the body out of wherever it was safely and two people I trusted not to get involved with you know, the media or the GOV or anybody else, um, I would do it really, uh, just because then you can say, Hey, you know, here's, here's the body. Uh, and I think that's, what's going to really take for people to really believe Bigfoot's exist. But there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of proof of them out there. And we're going to look into that today. We're going to kind of look at the different, um, proof of Bigfoot's. And uh, I kind of went through this on my Facebook page, but I'll go through all this again um, just because I enjoy it. Let's share my screen here. Let's see. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. So people keep asking me, where's your podcast? Um, it's on multiple different platforms. Through Speaker, we're on all of these different podcast links here. Um, and then we're on all, a bunch more. I can't remember them all. I think we're on almost 60 different platforms. So as you can see, this is our our, our iHeart Radio um, page for our, our podcast. Um, has all of our links. This is for our YouTube channel. If you want to go over to YouTube channel, and then all of our links for everything are here. Um, this is actually kind of old. I have I've updated this since this has been out. But you can see you can see you can listen to all the podcasts here if you want to. Um, this is podcast I think one twenty seven, hundred and twenty seven. So we have quite a few podcasts out there. Anyways, um, want to quickly talk about Manscaped. Uh, if you haven't gone over there and checked out their website, please do. Uh, if you choose to buy anything, uh, please put in uh, the code DWP. It'll get you guys a discount and let them know um, that we're, you know, basically you know, sending people to them. Um, I, I can vouch, I can vouch for them. Uh, really love the underwear. I love the t-shirt. Very high quality. Um, I have the, the trimmer, uh, really like that. Uh, and I have a couple other products for, uh, down there, if you will, um, a deodorant and uh, a couple of the products. And I'll go back into those later. I just don't want to keep showing them and showing them and showing them. You guys can see on here, um, the products, this link will be, uh, down below in the description of the audio and video podcasts. All right. So let's move on. Um, if you guys just want a place you can go to find all of our stuff, uh, our podcast and our YouTube channel are, are, are both on our website. Uh, if you want to come on here, um, you can go through and, and you can watch our videos or you can listen to our audio podcasts here. Um, public ghost hunts. I've said this before. We need to change this to public events. We're going to be doing, um, a ghost hunting event here in an old jail here soon. I'm working on, I got to restart working on the dates for that. Uh, we got to get out there before it gets too hot because it will be uncomfortable 
in the jail uh, in other buildings. Uh, but it's basically an old historical ghost town that we get to go through. And every single building seems to have some kind of paranormal activity. We're going to be doing about a two hour tour. It's going to be like 20 bucks per person. Um, not sure how much we're going to charge for kids, maybe half that price, maybe 10. And the proceeds, most of the proceeds are actually going to go back to the jail so that they can continue to, you know, keep the jail up and help them with their, uh, with financing, you know, finances and stuff over there because they're all volunteers. They basically spend their time, they work their butts off on keeping that place clean and uh, they really love that place. And so we really need to support them. Uh, we're going to have Bigfoot expeditions, public expeditions where you guys come out with us to different locations and um, help us investigate in places that we know there's Bigfoots, um, places you probably have never been before. Most of it will be on private land uh, through people that we basically know, uh, like Joe's camp. We're working. We're going to work with him on setting up an expedition out in East Texas. Um, where you guys can come out and see all this stuff. Um, on his property at the end of the uh this show i will uh open up joe's camp's video because i just realized something um i had seen something but when i reviewed the video i couldn't quite see it and now i'm looking back at it going uh okay yeah i did get it so anyways we'll, we'll look at or not just it it's them we got a bunch of them possibly on camera uh anyways all right so and then if you want to support us, um, you can buy us a coffee. Uh, each cup is about three bucks. And we'll, again, the link's down below. If you're on our YouTube page, it's up on, on the top on our YouTube page. And it just basically, our goal is to get to $2,000. Um, we're going to need more than that, actually. But we'll be looking for investors and uh, sponsors for our show that we're putting together. I was talking about this earlier, and I've talked about this last week, too. But we're going to put a Bigfoot show together. I am in the process of talking to another producer and I'm talking to other people um, that would like to be on the show. It's not going to be casted. It's going to be people I know that are into Bigfoot that are willing to give their time for right now and go out with me on an expedition every, you know, on a weekend, a uh, Friday and Saturday night, spend the night in a, in a place where we know, or we think that Bigfoot's are, and see if we experience anything for a day or two and then come back. So that's coming down the pike. Um, you know, and, and everything you see on the shows will pretty much be uh, on there. We'll have thermal cameras. We'll have guest investigators. Uh, I think we're going to try and have at least six people investigate with us so we can have two to three teams go off in different directions and, and basically uh, see if we experience anything. And there'll be, I'm looking to add a couple of ladies. I know my wife, I keep talking to my wife, Amanda, about going out and doing this. And she just rolls her eyes at me She's because she's a non-believer. Um, she's skeptical, not a non-believer. She's skeptical. Let's put it that way uh, at this point. And then, like I say, you have to have an experience where you can say that couldn't be anything else but a Bigfoot. And I don't mean you heard some tree branches being snapped or you saw a tree going back and forth or you heard a scream, you heard a howl. You heard a tree knock. Um, you have to physically see a Bigfoot. For me, like I was saying on my on the earlier, um, I've had the opportunity to have all aboard for your chance to win one thousand dollars every week until December twenty eighth. That's right, one thousand dollars cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone.
Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. You know, a couple really close encounters with them. I mean, where I was feet away from them and um, both at nighttime. That's scary as hell. Um, the one time I almost walked right into a Bigfoot's belly and if it hadn't grunted at me, I would have, I would have walked right into it. Uh, I couldn't see my hand from my face. I mean, it was that dark. The only reason I know it was a Bigfoot is I went back and looked at the film and it's like not even a split second or you see hair and, you know, above my head. And that's pretty much where the belly of this thing was. I'm six foot two. So imagine walking into somebody's like mid torso, you know, waist area at six foot two. That's a pretty tall thing, pretty big thing. So anyways, like I said, that happened to me on Joe's camp. Uh, my other experiences happened to me out in Black Star Canyon in Orange County, California. Um, just in case you don't know, we're in Texas. We spent a lot of time uh, researching out here in, uh, in all areas of the woods, uh, not just East Texas, but uh, north and south and west as well. Um, San Antonio area has activity and stuff like that. Oh, speaking of which, we will be doing a Bigfoot event uh, with a friend of mine um, uh, basically sometime in May. There'll be three weekends where we're going to be having events where people can come out and and uh, it'll be like a Bigfoot conference. It'll be really cool. So if uh, you're interested in that, once I get more information from him, I will start posting it on every single platform we have, uh, Facebook, t- Twitter, um, YouTube, Rumble, you know, the audio podcast um, as well, because that goes out to, like I said, 60 different platforms. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming down the pike. All right. So, like I said, we're we're just slammed right now. We're just so busy with so many things. Um, I, you know, this is a full time job that I, you know, basically work on the side for no pay at this point. Um, so I'm hoping hoping we can get this show put together and I'm hoping to kind of turn or turn us into more of a Bigfoot research team and maybe go after cryptids too. Um, Dogman has always been an interest of mine. Uh, Joe's camp, there might be a lizard man out there. Uh, he does live real close to the Texas Louisiana border. So scratching my head going, uh, is a possibility. The only reason I say that is because that one, those footprints we found, I've never seen anything like that. It looks like a giant bird footprint or, you know, like a lizards, you know, everybody thinks that lizards have like a long, um, you know, like a long skinny back part of their foot. And then they have a pad and then they have, you know, their toes that go forward. Oh, this thing had a long skinny. It was almost like a, a donut shaped. It was about that long and essentially, and then basically there was like a middle part where it kind of stretched out like a normal foot and then rounded out. And then there was three toes, very distinct toes. And there wasn't just one print or two prints. There was like five or six. We actually followed it until it got the ground got too hard and we couldn't follow it anymore. And honestly, I don't think I want to. Um, the whole reason we couldn't pursue it is basically it went into private property. And we were told by Joe, you, know, you can't go over there. And out in his area, people shoot first and ask questions later. So I uh, didn't want to get involved with that. I didn't know who the owner of the property was, so I couldn't follow it. Anyways, that's what happens sometimes. All right, let's move on. So we're going to look at some of the evidence out there, and then I'll show you guys some of the evidence that we have. This is the um, Skookum cast. Uh, and basically this happened out. And I'm not going to read this whole thing again to you guys. But basically, they say um, there's a group of Bigfoot researchers out in, uh, where was this? Washington State. So this happened in Washington State. It happened in the year 2000. And basically, they had been leaving some food out for Bigfoots in a muddy area because I'm sure they were looking for footprints. They weren't imagining they'd probably find a uh, body 
uh, a cast of a body. I mean, they, you can clearly see an arm and uh, some other parts of the print. If you really want to look into this, we can look into this later. I don't want to spend the whole uh, hour on this. But essentially what happened was they think a Bigfoot laid down um, in the mud, maybe to cool off or who knows what it was doing. But essentially um, they found it the next morning and uh, in an area where they left food. And so they cast this print and this prince like world, world renowned for um, Thomas Powell, uh, basically Tom Powell, uh, Thomas Tom Powell, um, essentially um, passed this thing. And it's been looked at by a lot of Bigfoot researchers, um, and they basically have said it's 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 a pretty good piece of evidence. So I don't I thought I had the the video of it. Okay, so there was a picture of the actual cast itself. It's huge. But essentially, it shows a hand and an arm and part of the side. Like, it lay down on the side, and there's part of a leg. And it's really cool. If you guys want to look at this, it's it's an amazing piece of evidence. You can see the diagram here where they figured out where it was basically at um, and where it basically um, laid down. It's right next to the road. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting. Well, let me just read this to you. It says one evening the team placed fruit near a muddy much <laughs> near a muddy patch by the road, and the next morning they discovered they had collected something significant, what appeared to be uh, the body print of a Sasquatch. And it says to this day this um, Spookum cast is considered to be one of the strongest pieces of physical evidence for the existence of Bigfoot. So yeah, I mean you guys can look into this more, or if you guys are interested, leave a comment down below. And we'll take a look at this. We'll take a deeper dive into this so we can do a whole podcast just basically talking about the cast. Uh, maybe we can, you know, look into some of the uh, interviews that these people have done about it. And we can play those for you, too. So speaking of interviews. All right, let's go here. This is the Patterson-Gimlin film. Let me blow this up. This is what they call Patty. Uh, what I like about this is back in the day... Um, you could basically, uh, you could, they didn't really have suits like this. This was taken in 1957, I think. This is six millimeter camera that Bob Gimlin, um, was basically using a lot. And he had his friend, uh, Bob Gimlin and, and Patterson. I forget the guy's first name, but, uh, Patterson is still alive. Gim, Gimlin is gone. He, he passed away a little, a couple of years ago. And so the story is that basically they found some prints. They went through and cast the prints. And the next day or something like that, they went out looking for what made the prints. And as they went along, um, they got to a, a creek bed where they saw this creature hunched over the, the river, essentially like drinking water. Uh, and then basically... Gimlin got off of his horse, almost fell off his horse from what I understand, um, and basically started, well, as he rode up, he, he was filming, and it was kind of bouncing around. I think the film is like two or three minutes long. And essentially, he followed the Bigfoot uh, up back into the forest. And if you've seen the full-length video, not just clips of this, but the full-length video, there's another Bigfoot up in the woods kind of standing there watching. Um What's really interesting is like Jeff Meldrum, um, he's a, a professor, I believe, at Utah, in Utah, um, and he's a footprint specialist. He's researched this thing. He's He's been in tons of shows, and he's essentially tried to debunk this several times, and he's also proven that you can't really debunk it. The way it walks, the way it basically, the footprints, all that stuff seem real. And if you watch this, I'm not going to animate this. Uh, this is a YouTube channel. Uh, again, all the links for anything I, I show you guys will be down at the bottom. You guys are welcome to come back on here and watch this. Uh, what's interesting is look at the eyes. The eyes are interesting because they actually kind of have that reflective um, surface. You can see the sun is kind of making a reflection off the eyes. You can kind of see the nose, and the mouth looks like it's almost covered with hair, 
uh, you can't really see the mouth. You can kind of see like an upper lip and you kind of see, you kind of see some lips right here. Um, but most of the creature is covered in hair. It's got that cone shaped head. Uh, it's got bosoms, if you will, or boobs. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble with uh, YouTube. So I'm going to be very careful about what I say. And what's interesting is as if you've watched the video, you can see the muscles like ripple through the body. Uh, unfortunately, I picked the wrong video, but you can see the buttocks. You can really see the legs here and you can see the calf muscle here um, and stuff like that. Dr. Jeff uh, Meldrum does a really good job uh, in one of the shows I watch. I can't remember what show it is. Uh, well, it's an older show talking about how it walks and the mechanics of how it walks and stuff like that and how the foot basically is different than humans and uh, which makes it hard for essentially anybody to back in this day, 1967 to um, essentially fake. This is this was shot before Planet of the Apes even came out, the original one. And uh, from what I've heard, uh, you know, filmmakers today that design these costumes now that look, you know, they can fake them today like this. They can make a costume like this. But they've all said back in this time, it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to make a suit like this especially with the bosoms and all that stuff. Um, it would be just very difficult. Nobody has, has uh, basically uh, disproven this video as a fake. Nobody's been able to prove it's a hoax. Now, a lot of people say, well, Gimlin said on his deathbed that it, it was fake. No, he didn't. That's, that's a lie. Um, but anyways, I think we listened to Cliff talk about this video last week. Um, you guys saw more of the mechanics. So if you want to go back to the video podcast on our YouTube channel or on our um, Rumble channel, you, you can do that. Bear with me. This is my second time doing this podcast because this one didn't record originally. And I think this is actually going to be better anyways. So um, anyways. All right. Yeah. So essentially it walks up the way and then basically turns like mid stride, turns the whole upper body. And looks back at him. And I've seen, I didn't know this was real or not until I actually seen um, a Bigfoot do this exact same thing. Same gape, same exact turn. Couldn't really turn its head like we can. It, it basically turned its head just a little bit and then the whole body came around and looked back at me as it walked away from me. And this one was about my size and height. Um, I'm six foot two, about 300 pounds. And uh, they covered a lot of ground really quickly. So let's move on to the next one. Um, you guys can go back and watch this video if you want. I'll put it in here. Uh, some of the other signs of Bigfoot are these tree structures and these pyramids and stuff like that. And the, let's go over here. And basically like this. If you're watching the podcast, uh, what it is is it's basically a, a like a tree that was maybe a three, two or three inch diameter and it's like literally like rung around. It's not just like snapped off and, and basically the wind blew it one way or the other. Maybe it twisted a little. No, this is like twisted over like somebody braided it. Um, and basically it goes all the way down, you know, basically snapped off at the top. Something physically turned this. Look at the bark. The bark has basically been sliced. You know, this, this, this would take a lot of pressure. Uh, more than probably a normal human could do. I'm not saying a human couldn't do it, but a human would have a very hard time. You'd have to use some kind of tool maybe to try and do this. But why would you? You know, unless you're trying to create an elaborate hoax. And but but why would you do this? It just doesn't make any sense. Why do Bigfoots do this? I think they do this because they're trying to mark their territory. Uh, they're trying to say to other people and Bigfoots. This is my space, you know, on this is my territory. You need to go somewhere else. Um, I've actually seen, you know, a bunch of these where we've gone out, out, you know, the day before and walked past up the trail, walked past trees that are just alive. And we come back and not only is the path blocked by obstacles everywhere, like a vine was 
literally pull the cross. Uh, this is at Joseph camp. I, I, I find them kind of humorous, to be honest with you. The way they kind of do things, it's like you can still get through, but they, they're they like saying, hey, you know, dude, this is my territory. Don't walk through here. This is my path. And so essentially they'll like pull a vine, a live branch or live vine across into another bush or vine so that you you have to basically pull the vine back out and push it across and you know it wasn't there before and then there's um you know this happened in 15 minutes when we were walking we walked from the front of joe's camp to the top of his camp up by the cemetery and then walked back as we're walking back through the forest the path we were on that vine was pulled across a branch was pulled like over like a whole tree was almost pulled all the way over stuck into the ground like one of the loops, um, but lower at like waist level. It wasn't like one of the, you know, a vine, a vine or anything like this, this big. It was only like an inch diameter. And then as we went, there was another log. And then there was some tree, some uh, tree trunks. And they're probably two or three inches wide, leaned against a tree, blocking our path through between the trees. And, you know, he's got a bamboo forest on his property as well. And those things are just snapped off 10, 12 feet high. If you know anything about bamboo, bamboo is extremely hard. It's, I think it's supposed to be one of the toughest pieces of wood out there. These things are just snapped off. It didn't, the wind just didn't, didn't just do this. Uh oh. Hey, no, no. Okay. I think my wife's letting the dogs out. Sorry about that. So, okay, yeah. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing. I wanted to show you these. Uh, so this is tree bents. Now, a lot of the time this happens with live trees that are still alive. They still have green branches. And a lot of the times these trees, it happens like overnight. When we spent the night on Joe's camp, we go to bed and then we we don't really hear much. And then we wake up the next morning and there's more tree bends. And, you know, I, I didn't know when I first met him, you know, until I went to his property, if he was just messing with me or if he was being real. And when I got there, I was just like, everywhere you looked, there was tree branches, this, these hoops, these loops, the trees bent over, a lot of them still, you know, alive and growing, still having green branches you know, growing out of them, leaves still on them, but they're bent over to the ground. Um, some of them were actually, the tip of them were stuck into the ground. Um, it's just really weird. I mean, there was hundreds of them, hundreds of them. Uh, so, yeah, just strange. So these are just examples of trees being bent over that people have seen. They're just taking pictures of it, probably other big footers. Um, and then this is actually in the Himalayan mountains. Um Basically, they saw a creature walking and essentially, uh, you know, it basically disappeared from view. So they kind of gave chase and they found these huge footprints up there, barefoot footprints. And it's freezing cold up there. I mean, you wouldn't no human could walk barefoot up there. Your foot would freeze off. You get, um, you know, rot and all kinds of stuff. Uh, your skin would turn black and, and stuff. So. That doesn't make sense. But the tree, the tree bends are very intriguing to me. Why are they doing this? Is it a sign of, hey, this is my area? Um, let's keep going here because I want to show you some other stuff. So again, Joe's camp. We've seen this so many times. I've seen this in the National Forest. I've seen this in a lot of places, tree structures. Um, there's these tree structures where basically these branches, these tree trunks are snapped off or very large branches are snapped off and they're placed in an X or they're placed in an um, asterisk-like form. Sometimes they're freestanding, and but a lot of the time they're actually leaned up against other trees. We call them, I call them teepees. But you can see, I mean, they just, here's one here. These don't blow up, unfortunately. But you can see in all these pictures, all these things, you know, where they're basically just crossed across each other. Somebody said that these are Bigfoot graves. They say they basically bury their dead. Now, again, you got to take all of that with a huge grain of salt. Um, again, Bigfoot at this point is just a theory. Uh, you know, 
people have experiences with these things all the time. Uh, 99% of the time they're not reported. So, I mean, we've met, I've met so many people since we've moved to Texas that have stories to tell. I say, Hey, yeah, that's great. Come on the podcast. No, 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 no. Don't want to do it. Well, you can remain anonymous. No, no, no. Don't want to do it. I say, I say, why? You know, there's no judgment on our show. Nobody's going to ridicule you or make fun of you or, you know, call you a liar or anything. And uh, they're just, they're afraid of ridicule. They're afraid to come forward. And I just think that's sad. Um, but the more I've actually met people in person, uh, I've just met some amazing people out here and uh, had a really good time talking to them about their experiences. And they've shown us places like Joe. Uh, Joe, when we first met him, was very reluctant to have uh, be on camera or anything like that. And the more we kind of work with him, the more he kind of came out of his shell and the more he uh, really enjoys it. Now he's, he's doing this full time for us up there. He's up in uh, East Texas there and he's by the Texas Louisiana border right in the thick of the Bigfoot activity. And so he's basically actively talking to other people, other witnesses, um, and talk, talking to them about their experiences and trying to find locations for us to go um, do our research at. Uh, speaking of that, I kind of talked about this last week. We're going to be, I'm in the process of putting a show together, a Bigfoot show. We're going to look at the shows that are out there that are really popular that you guys know a lot of people really like, the Finding the Bigfoot, Finding the Bigfoot, Expedition Bigfoot, and a few others like Monster Quest and stuff like that. We're going to take that and we're going to go full fledged forward with it. Uh, at this point, I am looking for another two or three people, maybe four, to come with me um, full time. Um, Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Every maybe Friday and Saturday, maybe like every other weekend or every weekend, go out and, and go into these areas where Bigfoots are seen, document it, um, spend the night. I want to, what I want to do. So I literally, you know, I'm talking, we're talking about these tree structures. I want to set up a hammock or a tent or something, or even sleep out under the stars. I want to, I want to set up camp in these places, not in the physical where they are, but maybe next to them, maybe within about 10, 15, 20 feet. I don't want to, you know, if this is like a native American burial ground, I don't want to trample on any, any, anything's grave. Uh, and I don't want to be disrespectful. And I know a lot of people are sitting there shaking their heads going, that's just wrong. But how are we going to get any evidence? I mean, if you don't go into where they are uh, and kind of push them a little bit, they won't react uh, and you won't get any kind of evidence. And now by when I say react and when I say push them, I don't mean like physically try and harm them or, you know, push push ourselves in a bad way. I'm just talking about in positive uh, in a positive way, maybe by leaving them food or leaving them, um, you know, treats or leaving them something to play with, um, you know, gifting, they call it gifting. Uh, so yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to get out there. I want to try all these tricks. I want to, I have a lot of friends that are hunters. Uh, I have a bunch of friends now that are big footers. I have a bunch of friends that are just really in enthusiasts, and want to have an experience that they can say it could be anything else, but, and uh, so I want to take those people and I want to go out in the field and I want to see what we can experience. I mean, 
in two years at Joe's camp, we documented a crap ton of stuff. And we'll talk about Joe's camp in just a minute. But yeah, I mean, I, it's a, a special place. I mean, when you have Bigfoots literally living, you're basically, he lives in their, in their living room, essentially. Um, they come across his property and then go across to hunt or whatever, but they spend time on his property. Uh, Joe is, has a very special bond with the Bigfoots there. And for your skeptics out there, I know we have, this channel has a mixture of believers, people that are on the fence, people that are like me, they're believers, but they're also skeptical. And then um, you have the non-believers, which, you know, I, like I said, you have to have an experience. So you could, can't say that could be, could <laughs> Let me try it again. You have to have an experience. You can say it can't be anything else, but, and like I said before, it can't just be, I think I heard something. I think I saw something. You have to actually physically be able to say that was a Bigfoot, Matt, you know, and that's the experience I want other people to have as well. Cause I've, I've been lucky enough to have that experience several times. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a, you know, like an adrenal rush for me, but anyways, this is getting a little long. I want to, I want to get through this stuff, but yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff I go looking for, um, you know, not to say all of these are Bigfoots, but it's strange how these trees, especially like a, I, I know firsthand because of Joe's camp. We find tree trunks with no roots anywhere near. No, you know, tree, tree, um, no base, no base from where it came from. Lean against another tree, and then other other tree branches like stacked against it. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Like this, we find, and, the, and they weren't this elaborate. Maybe because we're right there and they don't want to, you know, really be seen that much, but you know, it's just basically, we call them teepees where they basically put a um, tree trunk or a pre tree branch, large tree branch into one of these V's of the trees. And then they lean, you know, all kinds of sticks and other things weave, they weave um, vines through it and stuff like that. I mean, if you've seen Joe's camps videos, um, you'll know what I'm talking about because I've gone up to them and I've shown you guys them uh, many, many times on our YouTube channel. Unfortunately, that's not a Rumble channel yet. Um, most of that video it only lives on, on YouTube now because um, the camera that I had at that point in time, my computer is newer and doesn't like the low quality of the video. So again, um I don't know if I talked about this, but buying us a coffee, we're trying to get, we're trying to upgrade our camera gear, especially for night and uh, stuff like that. So let's keep going. Here's another one. This is what exactly what I was talking about, where you've got all these tree branches and trunks shoved up through a V in a tree. And it's just strange. Is there anything down below here? No. Okay. So it's just strange. That this stuff keeps happening. Um, here's this is Joe's camp. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is our video, so this won't be linked to below. Well, yeah, maybe I will link this below so you guys can take a look. This is my return visit. We had done a year's worth of documentary there. Um, this time I actually sat down and interviewed Joe. And if you're looking at Joe, look over here to the left, you'll see. All the tree bends, there's bend, bend back here. There's more bends back here, uh, over here. There's more bends over here. I mean, just if you look out into the forest, they're just, they go forever. But what was really interesting is I started seeing movement over Joe's, uh, I guess it would be his right shoulder, but we're looking over his left side. I mean, we're looking at him, you know, straight on. So it's kind of his left side, our left side. Uh, unfortunately, I can't zoom in on this. But I kept seeing movement over here. And if you look, there's a big black blob, blackish brownish blob. And you can kind of see what looks like an arm and maybe kind of a torso and maybe part of a head. And again, you got to got to take this with a grain of salt. Um, I just saw I, this is this kind of validates what I saw. I saw this thing moving. So I know what I saw. But unfortunately, with it being this small. Um, as soon as I turned and looked at it, it ducked, it ducked down 
and then it kind of moved. I saw it move a little more. So I, I was very careful about not, I, I made it look like I was focusing in on Joe. And then basically I, I didn't, I carefully kind of panned the camera a little to the left during this video. And then also, if you look over here, there's some other dark shapes over in this area. This is where Joe used to have his blind. Um, there used to be a lot more trees. You can see the tree stumps here. Um, he had a bunch of trees cut down because of bark beetles. Um, and so now they don't really come in as close during the day. They used to creep down all the way down to like right here. And this is only about 20 feet from us. It was creepy as hell. Um, also, this used to be a road that went up. This is where I saw that one daylight si uh, sighting where that thing was literally like the Patterson Gimlin film, like literally like turned sideways. I saw I could see the face. Uh, I'll never forget that. And, you know, I could see where the, the, sl the slit of the lips were um, and the, the tan skin around it, almost like almost like a perfect circle and the ripples of the skin, like a like almost like a monkey or chimpanzee or a gorilla would have. And then I went up to the eyes and the eyes were just the size of like baseballs. They were huge, but they were weird looking. They were um, white in color with a black pupil. I'm sorry. They were black in color with a white pupil, almost like the size of a large marble in the middle. Now, Joe has a theory um, that was interesting. He says that he's seen he's seen them multiple times on his property. He sees them all the time. Um, they basically walk by and, and he happens to walk out. They're standing right in a clearing and they kind of stare at each other. And then Joe kind of goes, oh, OK, I'm going to move on. And then uh, they walk back into the forest and all is good. So um, his theory is that they have, you know, he says they look like they're wearing sunglasses. So after seeing that, my theory now is maybe, you know, crocodile, a shark, they all have protective lenses that come down over their eyes when they go to eat. But if Bigfoots are so nocturnal, who's to say they don't have like a, a darker lens that comes down over their eye to protect their eyes during the day? Maybe their eyes are so sensitive that they have to have some kind of a protective lens, at least the black ones do. Um so anyways, you can watch this whole video. This video is about an hour long. Um, it just basically documents all the stuff that we saw in his camp. There's another video, too. That's a, it's, I think it's about an hour as well. Uh, don't quote me on that. But you can go back and watch that as well uh, on from his property. Um, well, that was when we first went up there, and we had a full team with us at that point in time. And uh, we spent, you know, what was it, almost a year, the first year, um, going up there every, as many times as we could and doing calls and stuff like that. And these Bigfoots would literally come down like to where these trees were at night because it was pitch black out there. You could, you know, they, they basically, if you didn't have infrared or a thermal, you couldn't see them anyways. So yeah, this, um, this got uh, only 150 thumbs up, which is you know sad. I think it's got 14, almost 15,000 views now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to go back up to Joe's camp. We're going to go into these wooded areas right here, back here, either on one side or the other, possibly both, and set up a tent, set up a hammock, whatever, in the forest back here. Because this is where those trails are, um, where the Bigfoots come down the sides, either side of his property, and go across, you know, go across the road into the forest across the way. I mean, he's got every animal known to man basically on his property, except for pigs. The pigs are on the other side of the freeway, which is interesting that they don't come over to his property uh, yet. But uh, anyways, yeah, so this is a cool video. Um, again, this is an older video. This is my first learning to put together videos. I was working with a producer at this point in time. And unfortunately, like I said, he got sick and uh, we kind of parted ways. So uh now we're producing videos. We're doing our own thing. We're we're getting ready to step it up, and uh, and really get out there and, and work with a have a crew following us around. Where that's that's our next step, and uh, we're gonna hopefully get that out here soon. Okay, so let me stop sharing my screen. 
So you guys can go back into those videos um, and check them out. Okay, so I told you I kind of present some of our own evidence. So I was trying to do this earlier. So that's a tooth. I apologize. It's This camera does not like... It's very sensitive. Wish I could turn my screen off, but there's ridges in there. There we go. With that light up there, it's a little hard to see. <laughs> Anyways, we have a, a tooth. Now, I don't know, you know. If you're looking at this, you're probably going, oh, I know exactly what that is. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's a cow's tooth. But if you look at the evidence they have for, um, why am I brain farting tonight? For um, Gigantopithecus, guess what they have as evidence? The only thing they have is one of these, one of these teeth um, from essentially, uh, you know, a cave somewhere in China. And that's how they base what they look like, what they probably ate, um, how big they were and stuff off of. Um, so yeah, that was actually caught. That was found at a person's property down towards Houston and, uh, they were creating a new suburb and he had moved in and, and basically explored the forest around his area and that he found that. So anyways, um, here's a hair sample. Oh, this thing's annoying as hell. <laughs> oh boy. So much for show and tell. So there's a hair sample. I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to move this at all. This green screen is terrible. If you want to go watch the uh, Facebook page, um, it's linked below. You can go watch our live there. So, anyways, we've got hair samples. This is from Black Star Canyon um, from a long time ago. I was hiking up in an area where we didn't really normally have permission to go but we have permission to walk up there i wasn't looking for anything bigfoot related um but i found a footprint and then essentially um real deep in the mud and i i didn't have any of my bigfoot research stuff with me i was actually out on a day hike with some friends and uh we're working with the irvine ranch conservancy and there's this huge footprint it looked like there was the only one and it looked like it stepped into almost like a hole by accident. Probably didn't see it. Stepped into this hole, left this huge footprint. I didn't say anything. I took a bunch of pictures on my cell phone. And this is a long time ago. The cell phone pic uh, megapixels were like six or seven megapixels. So that camera didn't do a very good job taking pictures. But I collected that hair sample very carefully. Uh, it had been out in the rain for multiple days. And so I don't think there's much DNA, if anything, in here. That could be, you know, from anything. But what's interesting is the long, grayish, whitish hair is exactly like what I saw on the Bigfoot, the, my very first Bigfoot I ever saw during the day. It was silvery gray, just kind of like that same hair color, long hair uh, like this. So, yeah, I just, you can see how long that hair is. If this thing will stop moving. And there might be some skin samples in there. Now, let's play devil's advocate. That could just be from a rabbit. Or it could be from maybe a coyote. Or they don't have wolves out there. But uh, it could be from almost a, a lot of different animals. It could be from a deer. But there was no deer prints there. Just the one Bigfoot print. So maybe when it stepped in that hole, it you know ripped a chunk of hair off. Uh, maybe the mud caught some of its hair. I don't know. Anyways. All right. So this is from Joe's camp <laughs> going, uh, but it's a rock. So on here, let's see if I can get this to turn. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I am not going to remove this from. <laughs> this is terrible. All right. So that white thing you see right here. This is actually a strand of hair. This was thrown at Joe's camp, uh, his his trailer at Joe's camp. He went out there looking around to see. He had no, these rocks were not there. I mean, you don't see rocks like that out there. His, it's mainly grass and mud and and uh, weeds and stuff on his property. His, if you don't know Joe's camp, his camp's like a football field. 
it's 55 acres and uh, it's long and skinny like a football field would be. And it runs right through the middle of the Sabine National Forest. Anyways, you guys have seen me show this before. If I hold it here, maybe. All right. So um, let me see if I can do this. So here's a toe print here. Whoops. There's a little toe like right here. There's another toe like right here. Another toe right here. Another toe right here. And this toe was weird. It went up. Oh, I'm sorry. So let me try this again. Toe here. Toe here. Toe here. Toe here. And then there's this gap. And then there's this weird like toe-like thing that comes up and it came out at an angle. At an angle here. So it came up and out like this. Um, this is not a great cast. Unfortunately, um, my very first casting and when I went to pick it up, the weather decided to change. It went from like 80 degrees down to, I don't know, the forties on us. We were freezing. I was in shorts and t-shirt. We'd been there for three or four hours. The thing felt solid. Uh, I covered it up with dirt, let it sit there in the warm dirt for a while. And then, uh, carefully started to pry it out. And then as I pried it out, it just snapped and about, 50 pieces and that was uh plaster casting i now use dental mold which i've made another footprint but the ground out there out in the santa, um, santa Ana mountains in orange county california is some of it the area i was is, is almost like desert it's just really hard dry dirt with like loose sand on the top so you could sit there and put a print down but it wouldn't you know it didn't give you any kind of a impression it wasn't impressed in the ground it was just like somebody if i had walked by in in uh you know in the dust and basically put my foot down and then picked it back up and it left that impression that's basically what it was there wasn't any like solid into the ground marks so i mean this casting sucks it's not very good unfortunately that footprint was 18 inches long and it was like the heel was like that big around if i had the full print you could basically look at it and go oh okay you understand more um what it looked like but the toes i mean the toes were like the smallest toe was like the size of a quarter and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger the four toes got bigger and bigger and bigger one of them was like um almost the size of a uh, half dollar and i was like i gotta print i gotta cast this I had just gotten casting. I was like, I'm going to do this. And man, <laughs> I had bad luck with me on that day. And then, of course, there's the hair sample that we got from the tree. I don't think you're going to be able to see them, but I'll just hold the bag up. There's inside here. I don't want to put my fingers all the way in. Uh, you can see <laughs> this thing's impossible. You kind of see there's some branches. In here, oh my gosh, stop moving. You can see some branches. There essentially are there's some very long, very long hairs stuck into here. Uh, I'm gonna basically do a video where I'm going to record myself basically taking it apart piece by piece and try and pull some of the hairs out so I can put them in a little vial like this. Oh man, this is impossible. This camera just does not want to see what I wanted to see. So we'll have to do this without the green screen. There we go. So you can kind of see there's a hair sample on here. There's some skin attached to it. But again, this has been out in the weather for years. And uh, so I don't think it's going to be viable to get any DNA off of, unfortunately. But, all right, guys. So this, this is getting a little long. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you watching. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, and hitting that thumbs up bell. I mean, the notification bell and then the thumbs up down below on any of our podcast platforms, whether it's the video or the audio, uh, really helps our YouTube channels uh, growing again. Uh, we're, mo we're moving up, and our audio podcast is doing really well, too. So um, we'll continue to do the podcasts. We're going to probably add and change some of our podcasts. I think the... 
like I said earlier, the pot, the paranormal only the par- anything goes paranormal podcast might change. We might be doing a dog man podcast as well. Um, and we're always looking for list uh, viewers, um, not viewers, guests. Or uh, sorry, my brain is just like done for the day. It's almost eleven o'clock, and uh, I only got like three or four hours of sleep last night. So, um, essentially, we're always looking for guests. Again, there's no judgment. We don't want you to come on here and get ridiculed or anything like that. Um, if you want to just come on and tell your story, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Bigfoot, aliens, UFOs. Uh, haunted locations, whatever, whatever your story is, if it's paranormal in nature, you know, our guests, our listeners and viewers want to hear about it. So um, anyways, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for listening. Uh, Again, please hit that notification bell. Please subscribe to whatever platform you're on and please give us the thumbs up or a a heart or something, whatever it's offered, because it just helps us get this out there more and we will catch you on the next one. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.